Hi, everybody. Thanks for taking the time today. I'm here with EJ Fernandez with Gallagher Insurance just to talk a little bit about insurance today. EJ, thank you so much for coming and let's get started. Why don't you give a little intro about yourself? Uh, sounds good. Thanks, Ellie, for having me on. I appreciate it. Um, again, my name is EJ Fernandez. I work for Gallagher Insurance. I'm a personal lines insurance broker. Um, I have been with Gallagher for the last two and a half, almost three years. I've been in the insurance business for about 12 years. Um, and so as a personal lines insurance broker, I mean, I try to break it out really simple for you. I, I sell car insurance, home insurance, flood insurance, and excess liability. And there's a bunch of categories within there. Uh, but really anything personal, um, I try to be a real advisor for my customers. So. Yeah, and I can personally speak to that because he writes the policies on my houses. So that's always a, always a good thing. I'm always <laughs> bothering him about something. Um, so why don't we chat a little bit about um, really kind of what has changed in um, the insurance industry during COVID? Yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, there's a pretty big difference between, you know, commercially and personally. So I'll focus on the personal insurance stuff. The most common thing that I'm sure everybody's been getting emails about from their current company is the 15% uh, premium rebate for the months of April and May on their car insurance premium. Uh, that's kind of the big thing buzzing around right now. Pretty much every company is doing it. And so, uh, but nobody's really clear on uh, how much they're actually going to get or when am I going to get it. And uh, I know that our service department in particular has been getting a lot of calls about that. So um, I, I always just tell, generally speaking, my customers that so the confusion comes that um, people think they're going to get 15% of their entire premium back for not, uh, for not driving as much, right? And so um, in reality, it's 15% of your April premium and your May premium. So if you pay $200 a month, you'll get $35 back for April and $35 back for May. And those deposits should automatically go back into your account or you should receive them via a check depending on how you pay. And um, it, you'll get your April one probably in May and your May one probably in June. Okay, so like basically if you pay in full for the year, they'll, write, they'll cut you back a check. But if you pay in payments, they're basically just gonna take it off the next couple of months, right? Right, exactly. Perfect. And then what, anything else with, with COVID related issues of, with the insurance business going on right now? Yeah. So, I mean, there's a, a lot of great stuff that we're seeing from insurance carriers as far as relief um, for their customers. They were pretty quick to act when all this started, but the biggest thing right now is, um, you know, forgiveness of non-pay cancellations. So, um, you know, Actually, before there's a law in place that actually stopped that altogether. You can't, your policy cannot be canceled for non-pay reasons right now. Uh, but I will say a lot of the companies um, put that into place before the, it actually became a law, which is really great to see. So, um, but you know, every company right now has a different deadline of of how long you have. So it's definitely important to check with your carrier and see how long you have before that payment is due. Now, it doesn't mean that your payment is not due altogether, um, similar to the whole mortgage situation that's been going on right now. It just means you get a little bit more time uh, to pay it and that you'll have the coverage driving around. Okay, and so that kind of comes into like our next topic is so, who are they calling and why? Like, I mean, you know, is there, you know, the, the I, you get the 800 number versus the person that wrote the policy, like where are these people calling and what should they do? Yeah, right, and that's always the, the tough question. And uh, it, it, there's a big difference between uh, what my business is, the model of how I do my business versus your typical direct writer or 800 number company, like your, your Geico's or um, Liberty Mutuals or insurance. Um, and so, um, you know, a lot of the time the number is on the back of your ID card or, you know, you, you Google it and, you know, if you call your 800 number, you're never going to get the same person. And with everything going on right now, um, you know, all those workers are working from home as well, too. So they've had to adapt their phone plans and, and how everything gets routed. And so some of the hold times can be kind of lengthy right now. Um, I've had to call some of our own service carriers and 
Um, you know, sometimes it can take um, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, which is a crazy amount of time. But, uh, you know, for um, if you have an agent or a broker like myself, um, you would just call them directly, right? I give every single one of my customers my cell phone number and you can text me, you can call me, it can be on the weekends, it could be at five in the morning, it could be whenever, and I'll try to get back in a pretty timely manner. Um, so it really is all just about personal preference. I mean, a lot of carriers and companies you see all over the world are trying to steer away from the phone altogether and have you do everything online, right? There's chats that you can do, you can um, send emails to help desks. And, um, you know, I just, uh, you know, truly don't believe that that is what people want at the end of the day. And so I provide a much more personal touch in that aspect. Yeah. And I think too, it's like just to get the information alone right now is, is complicated enough that everybody's hearing so many different, different things as to what's going where and having, having a go-to person that really understands the business and is able to guide you. Uh, I mean, even still when it's coming to, you know, creating a policy, like the, can you, do you want to touch on a little bit about like what the benefits are by going directly to a broker versus, you know, going and doing, you know, I don't know, Geico's, you know, uh, plan of like pick your price point. Yeah. I mean, and I, I piggyback off of the, uh, those commercials all the time because uh, they're just, they're just really funny to me. Um, but, you know, they have your classic, like you just said, the name your price tool, you know, that uh, flow has from progressive. Right. And uh, you know, you, if you go online and you're going to go shop for insurance, you don't know anything about it. Right. Maybe you're in your twenties and you've never bought your own insurance before. And, you know, it asks you how much do you want to pay? And the answer is probably going to be, well, as little as possible, of course. And, um, you know, and, and the fact of the matter is you get what you pay for. And, um, you know, so and there's a lot of kind of myths that go into personal insurance, especially on the car insurance side. It's so commoditized right now, I would say, where it's all so price driven. But there's a lot of importance that weighs on the coverages that go into your car insurance, right? And you could pay really not that much more uh, at the end of the day and get 10 times the amount of value out of it. You know, for, for example, I mean, um, you know, with your liability um, is probably the most important part of your policies of your car insurance and your home insurance. Most people, if you ask them, why do you have car insurance? They would say, well, it's to fix my car. Um, and that's true, but that's just not the most important part of your policy. And that's where um, you can find yourself um, being uh, underinsured without the advice of a proper insurance expert. And so that's kind of the difference where if you just kind of trust someone who knows the business, especially if it comes as a referral, right, from a friend or a loved one or someone close who can you know, take you in, take care of you, make sure that you're covered properly and still find you a competitive price. And not only that, um, two years down the road, when you want to make sure you're still in the best spot, rather than spending four or five hours going online to this company and this company and this company, you just reach out, shoot a text or a call to your agent or your broker and say, hey, can you just make sure I'm still in a good spot, you know? What do you think are the biggest mistakes people do, uh, you know, for getting insurance via, via personal link? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the biggest one, uh, again, is, is really just, you know, looking at just the bottom line. I, I, th I always see that, um, and, and that I open people's eyes. People are shocked sometimes when I explain to them the, the kind of coverage that they have. You know, when I tell someone, hey, if you injure someone in a car accident, your company is only going to cover you for $15,000 and you are going to be responsible for the rest of it out of pocket, right? Um, personally, and, and as homeowners, especially, right? That's a really scary thought. I mean, you're just putting all your assets at risk. I mean, that's the, the biggest mistake uh, that I make, uh, that I see clients make. And I always feel really good when I'm able to help someone out of that spot. Um, the second one is definitely waiting too long before you take a look at your insurance. Um, you'll find that, you know, rate increases with insurance companies is a perfectly normal thing that happens with every company. However, um, 
there are some years where companies will take much larger rate increases than your typical rate increase. And so by taking a look at your policy every two years, maybe every three years, um, you can save yourself from um, all of a sudden looking at your policy one day and saying, oh my God, why am I paying double what I was paying a couple of years ago? You know, so um, that's always a good one. Um, and kind of what goes hand in hand with that is, is having an organized file with all your insurance documents, right? Have your declaration pages in a folder somewhere um, on your home insurance, right? Like have some kind of folder on your on your computer with photos of what your house looks like and the stuff that you have in your house just you know just in case something ever happens and you need to remember um, so I think that that's probably one of the larger myths and then um, uh, or one of the larger mistakes and then I think that um, you know another big one is that you can have two policies side by side that have the same exact coverages they match up exactly same right but they're still not going to be created equal because I don't know if you've ever looked through your insurance policy but it's about 80 pages long and if you ever wonder what is in those 80 pages and not just the first three it's a long list of definitions and exclusions and um, you know the differences between those carriers so um, I, I've met maybe a handful of people who have rarely ever gone through that and by kind of having uh, you know someone look through that for you and make sure that, hey, this is the claim service that you're gonna get from this carrier. If you're okay with that, that's fine. Um, but I think we could find you a little bit more value over here um, with this with this carrier instead. You know, those are kind of some of the bigger ones. Gotcha. Now, so what do you think would be some good tips for saving on insurance? So, I mean, the, the biggest one that I always say uh, raise your deductibles, right? I mean, and everybody is kind of falling into this, well, I should have $500 deductibles um, because, again, that, that's what's perceived as the most important part of the policy, right? And granted, it is a little bit more common um, of usage than your liability coverage if you injure someone, right? But um, I would say that if you are worried about, a, you know, the increase in coverage, and liability, you can offset that by raising your deductibles on your car. Now, you can always come up with a loan for $1,000, right? It's never going to financially ruin you. But if there's a lawsuit um, for a million dollars, that is something that can certainly ruin you. So that's the biggest way. Um, the second way is reach out to someone to see and to have them quote your insurance. I mean, that's, uh, again, people who go five years six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years without doing that. Um, those are usually the people that you can save quite a bit of money doing that. Um, and then I would also just, um, even if you are with one of the 800 companies, right, uh, reach out to either a broker, an agent, whoever it is, it doesn't really matter as long as they're an insurance expert and make sure that you're getting all the discounts that you can be getting um, you'll find that, um, you know, with the 800 numbers, uh, if you if you don't ask about the discounts, sometimes they're not going to offer them to you, and um, you know, so I would say that's a, a pretty big way to save. Um, and and then also uh, the, the last kind of thing that comes to mind with me these days is uh, the technology, right? So there's these these apps that give you discounts for safe driving. That's really large right now. Um, ask about those because um, they're starting to become really popular and you can save uh, quite a bit of money doing that. And you're talking about the where like they they put in like the GPS systems to like track like how many miles you go and that kind of stuff. That's what you're referring to? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And um, what do you think about the bundles? Like are these really the best way to go when it comes to insurance or worst way? What is your thoughts on these things? I think that is, you know, 99% of the time, the way to go is bundling your car insurance, home insurance, umbrella with the same company. Those three basic policies. If you have investment properties as well, too, it's great to have those with the same company as well. Number one, they're going to know your, um, you know, your underwriting criteria right off the bat and they 
can um, kind of manage your risk portfolio all together. They'll give you discounts for having them all together. Um, I, you know, don't get me wrong. There are occasionally times where I, I've had to write, you know, an auto policy with one company and a home policy with another company um, because there sometimes there are, you know, um, you know, exceptions that that companies, you know, either won't write that particular risk or, you know, whatever you have it. But um, most of the time, like you referred to, I would definitely say bundle your insurance with the same company. All right, cool. EJ, is there anything else that we didn't cover that you think is really important that people should know or maybe do? Um, well, I, I just wanted to actually kind of touch on, um, you know, the real estate process in general. Um, you know, I, I find I do a lot of my, um, a lot of my home insurance policies that I write are as a result of some kind of real estate transaction. And I find that those transactions go, uh, the smoothest when you have a team of people who all know each other and trust each other and are in communication with each other. So, um, for anyone buying a house out there or any kind of real estate, uh, I would just say, you know, you know, trust your realtor uh, with the connections that they have, because I promise that it goes a lot more smoothly if you have a team of people working together and communicating with each other than it does if you kind of pick your own individual realtor, mortgage, attorney, title, insurance, if that makes sense. I'm sure you oh, yeah. agree with My that. Oh, yeah. My favorite line is always, <laughs> I have a guy, and I'm like, great. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, so. it's like, well, we have guys because we do it every day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. We've weeded, we've weeded through the guys. Yes. Well, and it's not a bad thing to obviously to shop around. Like that's what it, you know, is, it always comes down to is like, you know, we recommend the people because we know that they get the job done, but they, your people do have, you know, a, they work for a company and they have a discount program through here. So it's, it's good to open up the conversation and to ask questions and get advice and stuff. But at the end of the day, without question, you want to go with people that someone, you know, has used in the past. And yeah, it's a, I, I've seen things go down a very bad path when you, when, you know, they, everybody tries to get the discounts and, oh, this guy can beat this and next Y and Z. Yes. It's a, uh, Sometimes, yeah. sometimes it's a very big uh, bandaid that we have to rip off and you know get back to reality. Um, yeah, I, I also think it's yeah, I also think it's really helpful when um, you know because usually when you have a team like that, all the different pieces understand each other's business, right? Like I understand uh, like your business much more so than I did a couple of years ago before I started, you know, looking for my business in that uh, realm. You know what I mean? Um, I worked at an all state agency before here and I could not have cared less what the, um, the real estate process was. I was just trying to write my insurance and be done with it. But now um, I've tried to embed myself into that process so that I can make your life easier, you know? Yep. Yeah, no, it is. It, well, because it's a it, it it flows into the affordability of the home. So the insurance, the mortgage, you know, everything all in that place, you know, is all part of the transaction. You can't have one without the other. It's not like you can go and get a mortgage and close on a house without insurance being in place. It doesn't happen, you know. And right. you know, yeah. you can spend you can spend twelve hundred, you can spend two thousand, you know. When flood insurance comes into play, it's a whole nother ballpark. So there's a lot of aspects right. that we definitely. You know, we'll have you back on and talk a lot about, you know, all the different aspects of the insurance in a real estate transaction, because I do think that is very important for people to know and to kind of realize that the shopping needs to happen for affordability wise beforehand. Um, you know, this was, this was all really awesome information. I really hope people do sit, take the time and listen and get, uh, you know, a little bit better understanding of the benefits of having somebody that guides you through the process when it comes to insurance. I feel like so many people are like, I can Google it and, you know, and figure it out all on my own. And yeah. you, know, you, you lose part of the, um, the understanding of the big picture when you do that. So, I mean, having great, great companies like Gallagher, where you can go to and, you know, and call EJ and be able to say, Hey, this is what I want. And they can shop just like, you know, if you go and you put your information in on like, you know, the general or whatever those insurance like, you know, websites are, it is, you get more custom service where somebody's explaining the process versus sitting back and going, oh, well, that's just the cheapest rate. So I'm going to go with that one. Like, it really doesn't make sense to do it. Um, yep. any, anything else you want to add, EJ? 
No, I just want to thank you so much for having me on. I, I love doing stuff like this. It's it's really fun. It's really creative. Uh, keep it up. And I look forward to being able to help in any way that I can in the future. Sounds good. Well, um, all of EJ's information will be in the post as well as to um, you can reach out to him directly for anything. Follow him on LinkedIn or Facebook or any of that good stuff. Um, and if you need any contact information, you can always reach out to us if you can't find it. So uh, thanks, EJ, and we will be in touch. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Ellie.